Heads, welcome to another exciting episode of That Buzz Guy Podcast. Thank you guys for joining in. I apologize for not getting an episode out at the end of last week. It was a crazy week, all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, my full-time business that I run called Enid Buzz kept me running, and I had to do a lot of lives and had to write some stories and things like that, so I did not... I get a subject. I've got a couple subjects uh, in mind, hashtags and LinkedIn. I will be doing some episodes on those, but I uh, wanted to get an episode in before the new week started because uh, I'm going to have to get another one in at the end of this week. So the one thing I did notice was I've never done a introduction or a trailer episode. I hopped right in to try to help you guys start your own businesses because so many people were unemployed. So I'm going to kind of backtrack a little bit and this is going to be the official trailer of That Buzz Guy podcast. Just going to give you guys a little bit of my history, how I got to where I am, all the exciting things that I went through. And once you hear my story, you guys are going to be like, wow, if he can do it, I can do it. And so just want to encourage you guys to get out there and start your own side gig, your own business, your own side hustle, something like that. And don't forget that it's easy to get started. You guys can start a blog, a podcast, or a video channel today in, uh, you know, in 30 minutes, you could have something up and going. And I encourage you guys to do that. After you listen to this episode, if you have not yet started your own thing. Go back and listen to my prior episodes. Get something started and let's get going. So my background, uh, I am a guy that grew up in the 1970s in Enid, Oklahoma and was raised by a single mom for most of my life. And so uh, she worked one, two, sometimes three jobs to help support me and my sister and did a lot of artwork and things on the side. So we never, I never had a background with family and business, but I did always see my mom always having kind of a side gig kind of thing. So that may be where I got some of my entrepreneur uh, tendencies from. But all the way back into junior high school, there was a convenience store right around the corner from my house. So on the way to school, I would buy Jolly Ranchers and I believe at that time they were either a penny or two pennies, and I would buy those. I'd take a dollar in and get a hundred of those, take them to Waller Junior High School, and I would sell them for a nickel a piece and make money. So I think that was kind of my first venture into being an entrepreneur and learning how to uh, turn a little bit of money into more money. So went on from that and got into magic, started my own magic show, uh, charged people a quarter to come into the garage, and watch magic shows and then uh, I would do birthday parties uh, for kids and charge I think I charged fifty dollars back in the day to do magic shows and then I teamed up with my best friend and we would do magic shows together and then we would do a uh, music puppet show afterwards and so we did those for birthday parties and for churches and different organizations like that so always had something going on uh, once I got into high school, I kind of started sketching and drawing and liked to do cartoons on the side and started doing some logos for people. So basically, ever since high school, I've always had uh, some type of a graphic design, drawing, cartooning type of side gig going the entire time. So graduated from high school in 1981. Uh, before computers, social media, uh, compact phones, you know, any of that stuff. So went off to uh, junior college and got a associate's degree uh, from Northern Oklahoma College. And then I went over to Oklahoma State University for a year. That was what I call my lost year. And then I ended up at Central State University in Edmond, which is the University of Central Oklahoma now. And I spent two years uh, full-time in the art department and graduated with a graphic advertising design degree in 1986 and I had never turned on a computer had never even messed with a computer internet was still not around 
uh, social media was not around and we still did not have phones in our pocket. So went off and uh, looked for a job down in Dallas. Couldn't find anything at that point because uh, they said I didn't have enough inform you know, uh, samples in my portfolio. And I said, how am I gonna get stuff in my portfolio if you don't hire me? And they said, well, we can't hire you because you don't have enough. Anyway, the old catch 22. So I uh, made my way back to uh, Oklahoma City where I got a job as a uh, silk screen printer, worked in a silk screen shop. We did a lot of signs, decals, stickers, things like that. And so I started to kind of learn the process of graphic uh, design and preparing artwork for printing, but uh, really got kind of a background in silk screen printing. Moved on from there to uh, Scrivener, a it was a trunking trucking company that also had their own internal uh, printing press. I mean, one of the big newsprint printing presses. And so they also had their own graphic design and layout department. So I got a job there, started out uh, making signs, and then I eventually worked my way into the layout department and started laying out grocery ads where I did that for a couple of years. And then uh, needed to move on from that job and a job was listed in the Oklahoma City paper for an opening as a advertising director in Enid, Oklahoma. So I applied for that and I got that job, moved back to my hometown of Enid, Oklahoma in 1989 and I became the advertising director of a local uh, pharmacy chain and so I would lay out ads, did uh, coupon books, TV, radio, um, direct mail, just about everything you can think of, uh, traditional media, uh, we were doing it at the time. And so I did that, worked that job uh, for 10 years, but uh, that was uh, where things started to change because almost immediately when I got that job, I was told that after I put my first ad together and what I would do was lay out the ad on these uh, layout boards using border tape and wax and clip art and then I would put a uh, vellum overlay over it and then I would write in what I wanted the words to say for like the products and then I would put all that in a box and I would send that off actually to Scrivener, the company I'd worked for before, and they would lay it out, do the paste up, they would typeset it, paste up, and then they would print it and send it back to us. And so I was doing that uh, in the early um, 19, well, uh, 2000, I guess, no, uh, 1990s, the early 1990s. And, um, but one of the things after I would lay out an ad, they came to me and said, okay, once the ad is done, you've got to enter the UPC codes into the sales batch. And I said, okay, that's pretty cool. What is a sales batch? And they said, well, it's uh, this thing in a computer that you just enter the UPC codes and then it will tell all of the registers what the sales price is. So that was my introduction into an IBM XT uh, using DOS, turn that on, and I immediately fell in love with computers. Even though I couldn't do much, with, uh, you know, it was all uh, DOS based and a lot of keyboard, there was no mouse involved, but, uh, you know, getting the cursor and the computer to do things by just typing in words like format and copy and paste and, and things like that, I was kind of uh, smitten with uh, computers and so uh, kind of messed with that, entered those UPC codes and then heard about a uh, program called Windows that had come out. So I uh, learned Windows, taught everybody in the office Windows. We uh, installed that on all, actually upgraded all the computers. And uh, they, I think they actually came with Windows and um, then I kind of helped teach everybody how to use Windows. And because of Windows and the better computers that we had, I finally went to my boss and told him that there was a program out there called PageMaker that I could actually typeset the ads that I was doing and then send the boards down to Oklahoma City and we could save the money of the typesetting. And so basically I would typeset the ads on PageMaker and print them, print the words out and then I would still use wax and paste them up on the board, send the boards down to Oklahoma City and they would uh, print the, uh, our, we called them pony tabs, they would uh, print the pony tabs and then send them back and then we would have them inserted in the local newspaper. 
And a little bit after that, uh, I heard of a program that came out called Corel Draw. So I told my boss, hey, if we buy this Corel Draw, I can actually lay out the uh, program, typeset it, and then just send a disk to the company in Oklahoma City. So we did that. So on my own, I learned PageMaker, well, Windows, and then PageMaker, and then Corel Draw. And uh, so all that was going along. And then I had heard that most of the people in the graphic design world were using Apple uh, Macintosh computers. And so I went out and I bought myself a Apple Macintosh computer and didn't know anything about it, didn't know what to do with it. So I put it in my office at home and it literally, I think, sat there for about a year and I uh, hadn't done anything with it. Uh, continued to use the PC that I was using there at home. And I was doing uh, some side work, doing some layout and graphic design for companies, uh, business cards and logos and things. So I, I was using my computer at home to do that stuff. And then um, somebody came out with a program and I just, I can't remember the name of the program, but basically what it did was it allowed you to install this program on a Macintosh and divide your hard drive so you could have Windows installed with all your Windows programs on it and then you could also have all your Apple computer programs installed on it as well. And then when you went into the computer, you could pick which side you wanted to go on. You could either go work on the PC side or the Mac side. Now they didn't, they didn't talk to each other and you couldn't like copy something from one and then go paste it in the other. But that allowed me to actually start using the Apple computer as my main computer. Um, started to get used to all the stuff and then I was because it was all on the same computer as I had time I would kind of flip over to the Apple side and start learning the programs on the Apple side and eventually I uh, got to know the Apple computer and um, quit using PCs altogether and that's been decades and decades and I have not used a PC since so gone completely uh, Apple on all of that stuff and once I got uh, the computer going on Apple I installed uh, Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator so quit using Corel Draw and PageMaker started using the Adobe products um, got a lot better at those and so anyway that was where I kind of got introduced to the computer and computer programs but again learned all that on my own uh, just, you know, wanting to learn more and more. So after about 10, 12 years of working um, at that job, uh, around 1998, um, things were really starting to happen with websites. And um, I talked to a guy that, want, you know, again, I'd been doing the uh, cartoons and the logos and things on the site. So a guy came to me and said, hey, I need a cartoon logo. And I said, okay. I said, hey, I got an idea. Well, I will trade you a cartoon logo uh, for uh, a website. And he said, okay, um, I'll build a website for you if you do the cartoon logo for me. Now, the reason that I needed a website, so let me, I jumped right over that, was um, after being at this uh, advertising director's job for 10 years, I basically just almost literally woke up and decided that I wanted to do something different. And I thought, well, I think I want to become a full-time cartoonist, not really knowing how I was going to make money. But uh, anyway, I decided to be a full-time cartoonist. The only way that I knew to make immediate money, well, not even immediate, but even the possibility of immediate money was to draw single panel cartoons and send them off to magazines. And so I started doing that. And that entailed a lot of uh, drawing batches of like a dozen cartoons, sending them to a magazine, waiting to hear back, and then sending off another batch to another magazine, and just a lot of mailing and waiting and rejections and, and all of that. And so I'd gotten this, uh, I'd heard about these websites that everybody was getting. I got this bright idea all on my own that if I uploaded my single panel cartoons to a website that I could get editors 
to look at my cartoons and just buy them online and I could avoid all of the mailing, which was what was, you know, really kind of a pain in my butt. So um, I went ahead and did the cartoon logo for this guy and he never got around to building my website. Uh, I kind of kept after him and he finally one day came over and he handed me this box that had a uh, software disc in it. And he said, here, you know, install this and learn this and you can build your own website. Well, I had, I, I barely even knew what a website was, let alone build one. So uh, anyway, I decided to go for it. So I went to, I think at that time, I probably went to Network Solutions and I bought cartoons.com, C-U-R-T-O-O-N-S, because my name is Curtis and I wanted to start a cartooning company. So Cartoons was the name of the company. The uh, domain was available, bought it, and installed the software and started to figure it out. And I, to this day, I'm still searching for the name of that software, but I have no idea uh, what that software was. But it was really, I just remember it was really clunky. It, uh, you know, everything was rendered in HTML um, and it was kind of a, maybe one of the first what you see is what you see is what you get, a WYSIWYG. Um, but it was awful. It, you know, things were, you know, web design back in that day, um, you know, things look different on Macs and PCs and uh, Firefox versus Internet Explorer and just everything was a mess. You had to try to make websites as simple as possible. But anyway, so I did finally make me a website, uh, cartoons.com, had my single panel cartoons on there. Uh, emailed some editors, tried to get a hold of them, tell them to look at my cartoons, and it was nothing but crickets. It was not going to work out, and the editors did not want to see my cartoons online. They wanted me to continue to mail them, but what had happened was, while I was building the website, I started to add a lot of extra pages. One of them was a page where I'd put my uh, samples of my cartoon logos. Another page was where I was trading links. So, you know, search engines weren't really big at that point, but there was Hotbot and Alta Vista and the Open Directory Project and uh, search engines like that. But they, a lot of them were more like directories. They, there wasn't really, you know, they weren't like scraping the internet. You had to submit. In the, in, the, in the old days, you actually had to submit your websites to search engines. And so, and I don't know if we should call them search engines, but search directories. So it was, I think Yahoo might have been around by then, but uh, Google had not hit the market. I think they were still in the garage at that point. Um, so anyway, so the best way to that we thought that we could help each other out was to trade links. And so what we would do is we would create um, link pages where you know you would uh, contact a cartoonist and say, "Hey, I'll trade." A link to your website if you'll trade, you know, you'll link back to me. And so uh, most cartoonists did that. And I got the bright idea to create the most comprehensive, biggest cartoon directory on the internet. So I basically was trading links with every cartoonist on the planet that had a website. So, um, but what I noticed was I wasn't selling any uh, single panel cartoons, but I started getting comments and questions about the cartoon logos that I had on the website. So I eventually flipped the website and put the cartoon logos on the home page and um, started uh, getting requests from all over the world, um, Canada, Mexico, Japan, China, uh, Netherlands, just about everywhere, um, people inquiring about cartoon logos. So I started a cartoon logo business and uh, then lo and behold, uh, Google came out and what? was the number one ranking factor for websites when Google first came out? Well, it happened to be links. And guess who had the most links for every keyword related to cartooning? I did. And so my uh, website popped up in the top for all these cartooning terms. So not only was I, um, you know, getting requests for cartoon logos, but I was also ranking high for cartoon characters and funny cartoons and, and just all kinds of words that had cartoon in it. And so, uh, and it was, a lot of that was due to the fact that I had more links at that point. And so Google thought that uh, the websites that had the most links and the best links w should be ranked the highest. So I was ranking really well, ranking really high for all these cartoon related words. Um, started getting lots of uh, requests, doing lots of, uh, you know, 300, 
$400, $600 logos. And then uh, while I was on the treadmill one night reading a magazine, I can't remember um, Forbes or Time or People or, or one of those magazines, but there was an article on two guys that were making $5,000 a month doing this thing called AdSense. And so I thought, uh, you know, hey, I should be able to do that. So that night I went home, signed up for Google AdSense. This had to be maybe 2000, 2001, somewhere in there. So I signed up for um, Google AdSense and put the code on cartoons.com. I think I just put it on. No. So back in at that time, you know, each page was individual and so they were HTML pages. And so I put the code on the home page and woke up the next day. And I think, you know, I, I wish I had written it down, but you know, I don't know, 18 or 30 cents or so I had made money and, uh, man, my, I just, I, I just couldn't believe it. I, I had, you know, I realized, Hey, wow, I had made money by doing nothing but going to bed. I woke up and there was money in my account. So, I went ahead and added the code to the rest of the pages on cartoons and uh, started checking daily the amount and uh, started making a dollar and change a day from the people clicking on the Google AdSense ad. So this kind of went along for maybe a year and then um, started having uh, kids, had a child in 2002 and then a child in 2003. And what I was doing at the time was I was taking my girls with me to my office and while I was working on the computer, I would rock them in their car seats with my feet, uh, feed them and change them. And basically they would spend the whole day in the office with me. And eventually I got to the point where I was making enough money that I went to my boss and I said, hey, I'm going to um, work for you in the morning and then I'm gonna work for myself in the afternoon. And then it wasn't long after my second daughter was born where I was like, you know, I think I'm just gonna stay home and uh, told my boss that I was going to quit as an employee. He didn't have to pay me as an employee, but I would um, continue to do the work for him, but he would just be one of my clients. And so around 2003, I think, I uh, went home, quit my job, went home, and started working for myself entirely on the internet. Um, I did have, you know, was doing some side gigs with logos and graphic design and uh, things like that, but my main gig was the cartoon logos and the Google AdSense. And so, uh, again, like I say, about 2003, 2004, I decided, hey, if I can make, you know, this much money a month with uh, one website, what would I, you know, could I double that with two websites? So I started building more websites and learned um, what we call search engine optimization, SEO, and I call it optimization. I'm hearing a lot of people pronounce that different. It drives me crazy, but uh, you know, tomato, tomato. Um, so anyway, so I got into search engine optimization and also learned uh, some other techniques and things. And um, oh, learned how to discover the right keyword. So basically, what what you try to find is a keyword that uh, got enough traffic that it was worth building a website for, but you wanted to pick a keyword that didn't have a huge amount of competition. So, you know, I wasn't going to pick New York real estate, but I did pick like um, tattoo designs with the word tattoo misspelled because at that time, about half of the United States did not know how to spell tattoo. And so there was a lot of people searching for tattoo designs with the word tattoo missing a T. And uh, so I cornered the market. That was just an example. So one of the websites that I did was etattoodesigns.com. So anyway, started building these websites based on these keywords that were uh, highly searched for, but had the least amount of competition. One was April Fool's pranks. One was baby dog names. Um, and so that was dog names was the keywords for that. But anyway, started building all these websites. And of course the, uh, the income did go up. So for, ba for each new website, that I built. Um, it just added more and more and more to the amount of money I was making with AdSense. And so by the time I was done, I almost, I either did or almost reached 100 websites. And, uh, and then what I started doing was putting the different websites on different servers 
and then I would link to them. And so I kind of created this whole network of websites that were linking to each other, which um, to that at that point, um, links were still a huge part of your ranking in Google. And uh, to get 100 websites built, I built them all on what we call thin content. Otherwise, I wouldn't have built them been able to build that many and, and so what we mean by thin content is I would build a website that might only be five pages the entire website and each page might only have one paragraph of text on it but at that point I knew SEO well enough that I could get and there was you know I was looking for keywords with the least amount of competition so I was able to get a website ranked uh, you know, within the top five for certain keywords, even though it didn't have much content because the algorithm at that time was not looking for content. It was looking for links, the right keywords and the title tags um, and things like that. And so I was able to get all 100 websites ranked pretty well. And that traffic, um, you know, at my peak, I believe I was averaging. And so, and so I did that for 10 years. The AdSense business was 10 years. I believe at the peak, I was averaging $4,000 a month. Now, I, of course, there were some months where I, some months where I would make a lot more and then some months where I would make less. But, um, you know, for the last several years that I was doing that, I think I was averaging 4000 dollars a month and then probably the same amount is what I was making with uh, the cartoon logos and so everything was going along great everything was fine um, whipping out you know I would update the websites just a little bit but um, you know continued on and uh, got into kind of a mode and just kind of kept those 100 websites going and the cartoon logos going and I uh, was working at home in my shorts and my sneakers, raising two girls, and everything was good. And that all lasted in about till, uh, until 2012. And uh, in March of 2012, I had this, uh, this um, uh, you know, I'd wake up every morning and I would look at the traffic for my websites and how much I had made on Google AdSense. And, you know, I would do it early, but even early, you know, there was a certain amount, I can't remember what it was, you know, $5 or $8. So there was kind of an average of, you know, the amount of money that I would make by 8 a.m. in the morning. And uh, for some reason, I just checked it and I knew everything was good. But in March of 2012, I checked that dude and uh, there was uh, crickets, hardly any money in there. And uh, I thought, and so we had experienced uh, sometimes where Google AdSense had not updated the amount of money or the amount of traffic that it was tracking. And so I thought, okay, there's something wrong with uh, Google AdSense. And, you know, in an hour, it's going to pop on there and tell me all the money that I've made. So I went, went about the day and um, it never popped on. And so uh, by the end of the day, it showed that I had very little traffic, very little Google AdSense money. And uh, so I went to bed and woke up the next day and same thing. And so started doing some searching and we found out that Google had done a major algorithm update and it was called the Panda update. And if you Google that, the Google Panda update, you'll find a lot of information on it. Uh, it changed a lot of the way that uh, the website works, the web, the internet and uh, web design works. A lot of people went bankrupt, went out of business, shut things down, went and did different things. Um, I almost had to, but uh, luckily I had the side gig of all of the graphic design and cartoons and I had cartoon uh, logo clients that were coming back for more work. So I had, I had enough work to keep me barely going. Um, by that point, I had been making so much money that uh, I had all my credit cards paid off, the cars paid off, um, was pretty much out of debt. So, so I didn't need to make a huge amount of money at that time. So when it first happened, yeah, basically everything was gone. My income literally stopped. But, um, and I think I was making maybe a couple of hundred dollars a month with AdSense, but not the thousands. And uh, so I started doing some research and uh, we'd get together with other guys in forums and we tried to figure out. And the, the guy that came up with it was a guy from India named Navneet Panda. And that's why it was called the Panda Update. But uh, basically spent a year on my own kind of trying to figure out the algorithm, the SEO of it, uh, read article after article after article and nobody 
um, ever, you know, came up with the solution. Matt Cutts had uh, posted these, you know, bazillion questions, um, you know, to answer. And if you could answer all of those, then then your website would be okay. But basically, what it what it came down to was um, Google killed all thin content websites. Well pretty much all 100 of my websites were thin content websites. And so I was crushed. And then later the um, Penguin update came out, which had to do with, I think, linking and, and network linking, which was just another nail in my coffin. So basically um, for a year I was using credit cards, um, had used all of my uh, retirement uh, savings account and uh, was trying to survive while I tried to figure out the Panda update. Well, never figured it out, and so um, uh, started running out of money. Bills were coming in, and so, uh, you know, I think within a year, I decided I was going to need to do something else. And I'd been doing, a, you know, I think I was on my 10 or 12th year of working for myself, so I did not want to go get a job and have to work for somebody. So I started thinking, what you know, what could I do uh, on my own online that I wouldn't have to go get a job. And in the mid 2000s, uh, blogging had become really big. So I had started two blogs. One of them was curtistucker.com, which is uh, that buzzguy.com. And I'd also started a little blog for my hometown called Enid Buzz. And on that blog, I just talked about old memories, posted old photos. And I actually had a couple advertisers that were paying me $10 a month, but maybe just three or four. So the website wasn't making much money, but, um, you know, when I had a hundred of those websites and they were all making, you know, 50 bucks a month, it all added up. So, um, but I thought, you know, I wonder if I could make Enid Buzz a legitimate business. And so I rebuilt the website with WordPress, which was a godsend. Um, that's why I highly recommend WordPress to everybody. You guys need your own websites, don't forget. And uh, so then I um, rebuilt Enid Buzz, put a business directory on there, uh, started getting uh, more advertisers, started posting a lot of articles and press releases and things like that, and basically made that my job. And so I was posting quite a bit all the time. Uh, and then uh, luckily, timing was great, and Facebook pages had just come out. So I started the Enid Buzz. I, I think I already had it, Enid Buzz Facebook page, but again, it was something that I didn't update very much. And so since uh, Enid Buzz, so, so basically, I decided, you know, basically like I had w woken up to do the cartooning thing, I basically woke up and decided, okay, Enid Buzz is going to be my full-time business. So it was my full-time business. We're talking eight, 10 hours a day. I worked on it. I, it was, it was all I did all day. And so started doing that, um, started, you know, finding more things to post. I was digging for stuff. And uh, then I started updating the Enid Buzz Facebook page and I started updating it every 30 minutes because in my mind, I thought of it as more of like a, a news feed, a ticker tape of all the things that were going on in town. And so, you know, each time I would find something, I would post it. Um, that didn't last too long. Uh, in the, and I think in the beginning there was no scheduler. And so I was having to, I was kind of tied to the computer, having to update that. So I backed off to posting every hour. And then, you know, here's a fact. And so that was in 20, somewhere around 2013. To this day, 2020, I have not stopped. So uh, never took a break, even when I went on vacation, never stopped posting. So I've consistently posted you know, other than a couple of weird times when I couldn't, but basically um, every hour from about 7.30 in the morning to 8.30 at night are my usual hours, but every day of every year for year after year after year, I started posting. Well, that consistency uh, got a lot of people's attention and also just the ton of information that I was posting. So I got a lot of followers, went from 300 to 3,000 to six to nine to 12,000. And uh, I think I'm sitting around 34,000 today. For a town of 50,000, that's not too bad. But the um, Facebook page kind of catapulted me to uh, a really quick brand. So Enabuzz became a brand. Uh, the website lets me, you know, I started adding jobs and uh, obits and things like that. Things that you would find in a newspaper, but um, because of the video and lives and things like that that I was doing, 
Um, I'm kind of more considered maybe Enid's online TV station rather than uh, a print. You know, I'm not really competing with print because everything I do is digital. So, um, luckily, uh, Facebook Lives came along. That really catapulted my brand because people started seeing my face and recognizing me and uh, couldn't really go anywhere without somebody saying, hey, aren't you that Buzz guy or aren't you Enid Buzz? And so that's where... Uh, the name that buzz guy came from my uh, followers or the my readers are the ones that named me so they're the ones that came up with that name so I went with it so continue to do that and it started to build and luckily uh, it became so popular so quick that uh, most businesses would contact me and say hey how can I get on Enid Buzz how can I can get into the directory and so I didn't have to go out and do any selling and got to a point where I was making enough income off of the advertising that I kind of got back to not quite, you know, exactly where I was, but, you know, making a decent, making enough to live on. And so I've been doing Enid Buzz full-time as my full-time business since 2013. But again, me being kind of the entrepreneur, not able to sit still type of guy. Um, within all of that span from 1999 when I built my first website, or 1989, 89, 99, no, 99, 1999, um, you know, in those 100 websites. So mixed in with all that, I started a paper greeting card company called Chuckleberries, and you can still go to that. I believe I've got some stuff on there. I don't know that you can. Buy, you can buy uh, Chuckleberry's paper cards at Zazzle, but um, I think I had about 100 stores at one time where I was sending uh, paper cards. The thing was, I, uh, I was writing them and designing them in my own studio, and then I was printing them uh, because printers had gotten so good that I was printing both sides, folding them. I was buying scored greeting card paper from a printer, and then I bought uh, my own. A company was selling polka dotted envelopes. I would sell those, or I would buy those, and try to brand the Chuckleberries uh, greeting cards with their own polka dotted envelopes. So I did that for a couple of years and uh, basically stopped it because uh, I just got tired of printing all the time. I was getting so many orders that I was spending a lot of my day printing, packaging, and mailing, and that's not what I wanted to do. And again, um, being the goofy guy that I am, wanted to stay an indiepreneur, so I didn't hire somebody. I at that point, I probably should have hired somebody and had them doing all that, and that business could be going bonkers right now. But uh, still got it around, still got all those cards, and I may fire that up one of these days. But uh, one of my favorite brands and characters and names, Chuckleberry's Paper Card Company. Um, also started selling clip art and uh, royalty-free cartoon characters online. So had a whole bunch of different avenues of income coming in other than just doing flat out graphic design and logos and uh, had kind of given up on Google AdSense at that point and affiliate marketing. I'd been doing some affiliate marketing. Um, so I will say though that recently, probably within the last year, uh, 2019, I did start getting back into uh, Google, uh, mostly on Enid Buzz. And I think I'm making around $200 a month again and um, so we'll see where that goes I'm not sure if I want to get back into the whole Google AdSense thing um, but uh, Enid Buzz is going well with all of the uh, advertisers on there started a, a t-shirt company where uh, we bought our own silk screening equipment print our own t-shirt sell them uh, actually had a brick and mortar store so we were selling those there and uh, opened up a Shopify store sold them online um, so I've done t-shirts on and off over all the years and then my silk screening experience uh, helped me be able to this, do the silk screening so even so right now we've shut down the brick and mortar store um, and uh, yeah, we're waiting to see what we're going to do on that. But uh, again, within that time, and so even way back in the beginning when podcasting started, I even tried podcasting, but it was so early uh, in the world of podcasting that it didn't go anywhere. So I kind of stopped that. But uh, then in about 2017, me and a buddy of mine, um, I decided I wanted to do a podcast about growing up in the 70s. And so we started the 70s Buzz podcast, which we've been doing for three years. I think we're on 100 and almost 130 episodes, 100,000 downloads. 
Um, but anyway, that led to me thinking, hey, instead of uh, when I would meet people and they want to want to talk about marketing or um, social media or things like that, I would spend you know an hour or two explaining to them how things worked, building websites, SEO, stuff like that. So. Uh, in my back of my mind, I've always thought, you know, I need to, um, you know, restart my blog or start something where I put all this information where more and more people can see it and they don't have to actually meet with me and do the one-on-one -on -one thing. And so anyway, that's where that Buzz Guy podcast idea came from. So I thought, you know, if I just do a podcast episode where I talk about SEO, that will sit out there and live forever and people can either watch the video, they can read the blog post, or they can listen to the podcast and uh, learn what I know about SEO. So that's where the podcast came from. And uh, I think this is about episode 12, I think. So lots and lots of uh, branding, marketing ideas, and things like that to come. But uh, so again, um, if you, uh, this is kind of the trailer for that Buzz Guy podcast where uh, just kind of going over the experience that I have. So I've been at it um, basically, like I said, I graduated in 1986 with a graphic advertising design degree. So I've been in the graphic design uh, arena since 1986, but actually since 81 when I was in high school and started doing. Uh, it is a side gig, but I've done tons of logos. I've got all the experience of your um, everyday traditional uh, marketing, including television, radio, uh, print, uh, direct mail, email, websites, you know, just everything. Um, and then uh, working for myself since about uh, 2003, working at home full time and have really enjoyed it. So I've got a lot of background and a lot of different things that uh, I will, hopefully I can share with you guys. You guys, please let me know um, questions or topics that uh, you think maybe I could help you guys with. Uh, I'll do whip out a 45 minute to an hour episode and try to help you guys or explain something. But uh, you know, I'm just like you guys, I'm still here trying to make it. Uh, just launched uh, this podcast not that long ago, seeing where the podcasting world might take me, um, continuing to do the blog, uh, have the video channel going at youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. So doing a little bit of that. Uh, still going on adventures. Uh, starting into Buzz has led to a lot of adventures. I think that was one of my last episodes where I talked about some of the really cool things that I've gotten to do over the years, but I um, would highly recommend everybody putting themselves out there online and um, see where it takes you. Uh, some other things, I, I just uh, kind of decided uh, a week or two, now I've talked about this new idea for a long time as well and have never done anything, but I think I'm gonna write a book. So the intent is to write the book, have it turned into a screenplay, and as quickly as possible be made into a movie. I know that sounds like a pipe dream, but I actually think I can get it done. But it's gonna be about a group of boys uh, growing up in Enid, Oklahoma in the 70s. And this one summer that changed their lives, there'll be some adventure, some big funky event. Um, so just think uh, the Goonies, combined with Stand By Me, combined with Lost Boys, combined with um, Super 8, and maybe a little bit of Now and Then thrown in, and it's gonna be one of those coming of age uh, movies. So I've got ideas swirling around. I've already got the title. Um, as soon as I get everything sewed up on the title and stuff, I will release that. But I think it's gonna be fun. I think you guys are gonna enjoy that book. So that's, uh, one project I've got going, um, still doing the t-shirts kind of on the side, uh, selling some of those on that buzzguy.com. If you guys click on the shop button, you'll see some of the t-shirts. So I'm still designing t-shirts. Um, haven't completely given up on the greeting cards. Uh, we're, I, we were actually selling the greeting cards in our brick and mortar store, uh, the t-shirt store. So I don't know, got a lot of stuff going. I'm gonna continue to kind of play around. And you know, one of my mottos is I wake up every day and look for a way of making money so I don't have to go get a job. So I will continue to do that. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna to continue to help you guys do the same thing. I want everybody to be able to wake up and have that freedom. And I stress freedom, not, not so much the money all the time, but 
have that freedom to do whatever you want, to wear shorts and sneakers and backwards hats and go see your girls dance or perform at school anytime you want and not feel like um, you're having to ask for a day off. So work for yourself and you can work when and where you want. That's uh, one of the biggest factors of working for yourself. So I highly recommend that. I highly recommend everybody get started. The sooner you get started, the sooner things can start to take off. Don't worry about uh, you know what you're beginning with because you're going to be able to pivot. Uh, I've done some major pivoting all the way from going from uh, cartoon, well, from graphic design to cartoons to uh, SEO and then to Enid Buzz and becoming so Enid Buzz basically now has become a media company. So I am a digital publisher and uh, provide, like I said, news and press releases, and then I go do uh, live coverage of events. And uh, so all of that media attention has led to a lot of opportunities and uh, may even start kind of a series of how other people can start. So, th so that's one thing. So if you're living in any other town other than Enid, Oklahoma, uh, and you're looking for a side gig to start, I would uh, recommend maybe starting your own um, you know, website and Facebook page about your town. And if you can provide the right information and stuff, it could be a moneymaker. So I've been doing it again since about 2013. Uh, Enid Buzz is a full-time thing, and so uh, it's really been fun. I've really enjoyed it. So maybe I'll do a series on uh, podcasts, uh, how to get that started and what to do on that. Um, it does take, you know, it's a full-time job, so so don't think that's going to be, but you could start it on the side and then work it into a full-time job, so um, lots of fun things there. Again, uh, you guys give me your ideas, uh, buzz at buzzheadmedia.com, try that email. You guys can find me on lots of different uh, social media, on Instagram is Enid Buzz, on Twitter is Enid Buzz, and uh, also I'm on LinkedIn and uh, uh, trying to try I'm trying to figure out what to do with TikTok haven't figured it out if you guys know some cool things to do on TikTok you guys let me know and uh, try to figure that out but anyway I uh, appreciate you guys listening again this is kind of the trailer for the show just to let you guys know that I do have some background in all of this and um, um, being 57 now yeah it's kind of scary thinking about that uh, do have a lot of experience with not only the technical side of things, but just the the knowledge of working with clients and um, you know back and forth and and just just the overall thing. Now again, I've always stayed an entrepreneur, so I don't really have anything to sell at this point. I'm not trying to get you guys to uh, join a course or buy anything from me. So not, but I'm not you know eventually. Hopefully, it'll be like T-shirts or inspirational things or something like that. I'll come up with something and uh, see if I can make some money of that as well. But I think that's about it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else around here that I'm doing to make money at the moment. And I don't think, I think that's about it. I'll keep you guys updated on all of those uh, things that are going on. You guys, please uh, stop by that buzzguy.com. Please uh, subscribe to this podcast or leave me a review or click on the stars. I need to bounce up into the um, top of uh, iTunes, otherwise it's going to be harder to try to get a lot of people to listen. Please go to uh, youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV, subscribe to that channel. Once I get to a thousand, I'll be able to do a lot of different things there as well. So please continue to listen. I appreciate all you guys. Have a great, uh, we'll be coming up on Monday. You guys have a great week and we will talk to you soon.